What if I told you that there is a specific plane in War Thunder that is absolutely broken because of the recent BR changes and the decompression? And no matter if it is an up tier, your own BR, or a down tier, you'll absolutely feel and perform superior to anything else that is facing you. What if I also tell you that this blink can actually kill players without the use of its guns? I mean, you can use your guns, but let's be face it, most times than not, you're not going to be able to use it. After my month-long break, I come back to War Thunder to find out that the Harrier GR7, one of the most amazing planes and broken planes out there, is at 11.7. And the absolute thing that makes this aircraft actually broken is four AIM-9Ms and literally 700 countermeasures. So now you're like, okay, there must be a catch here. There must be a thing about this plane that makes it balanced in such a way. Well, here's the thing. There isn't. Well, probably there is a minor little thing, but but with the missiles that you have, it really doesn't matter. I mean, this plane, other than the 700 countermeasures that you get and you can set on periodic, well, a flare dispensary thing, to keep you safe from any IR missile throughout the dogfight, throughout the match, throughout the furball, throughout everything, without having to worry about your situational awareness, well, it gets an extremely, extremely, extremely agile body and it gets a superb, and I do mean a superb acceleration. The only thing that this plane right here, the Harrier GR7, the only thing that it has in the minus is top speed. And literally that's about it. The plane itself cannot go above Mach and it cannot sustain, well, a top speed for a really long time. But like I said, well, with four AIM-9Ms, you really just want to ambush the enemy team, and that's about it. And once you're in the furball, deploying all of your countermeasures, not having to worry about anything killing you, basically. Well, let's just say that you're going to get at least, at least three kills minimum. And this makes me actually question a lot of things. Well, first, why aren't people using this plane more often? Just because it's a Harrier or it doesn't go mock, it doesn't mean that it cannot actually perform well. And to be fairly honest, I have no answer for that. Now, this plane right here is an actual joker. And what I mean by that, it is actually really fun. I remember me and my friend, uh, Wow Pig, Another content creator taking planes such as these, planes with a good loadout of Mavericks and just camping enemy airfields, killing players with those Mavericks that we talked about. I know a lot of people will argue against that and they say, well, it's airfield camping, but hey, you got, it feels pretty good to kill somebody with a Maverick. Let's just say that. Now, if you have this aircraft or you're thinking about getting this aircraft in the British tech tree, there is also one in the Italian tech tree uh, with a rotary 25 millimeter cannon. Uh, I don't think it's at 11.7, but I could be wrong. Just check. I did. Basically, it gets the same loadout, same everything, just different gun. And that's about it. But if you're planning on getting these aircraft, I actually recommend them right about now before anything actually changes or happens to them. And it's actually one of the few aircraft out there that you can reliably put a talisman on and that will help you grind the, everything else around the tech tree. Now, if you're new to a Harrier like this or flown other Harriers before, especially the first generation Harriers, you'll realize that this is not your typical Harrier experience. The plane actually performs, the plane actually turns. And when it comes to the tactics to use with it, here's what I recommend. Here is my strategy. And basically, this is like the easiest thing that you can ever do, to be fairly honest. You just take flares reinforced, stay low, have a key for periodic countermeasure release, and that's about it. Go into fur balls and actually capitalize on that. Be the disruptor. Be the guy that actually messes with the enemy team and keep your head on a swivel because everybody will try to gun you down because when it comes to their missiles, 
it is not going to work you can also flank the enemy team from the side and that is going to help out immensely with kills another thing about staying low with this aircraft like literally hugging the ground is those pesky f-14a's with their well phoenixes or anything basically with a radar missile if you fly low enough to the ground no radar missile will hit you and that is why i don't take any chaff with this aircraft because i actually don't need it now why do i take reinforced in the case of an up tier because i just press battle and i just spawn in and go and then check if i'm in an up tier or not if i'm in an up tier i don't want any nasty r73s or r27 t's or et's or aim 9ms or anything to kill me so that's going to be an absolute massive help when it comes well with just universally playing this aircraft however you like now i know that a lot of people out there are tempted to use the thrust vectoring on this aircraft in dogfights and such and to be fairly honest i don't recommend it unless you're in a 1v1 and you've practiced enough with the aircraft to know what you are doing because as soon as you go vertical or as soon as you go hover mode or lose your energy with this aircraft you're sacrificing too much just learn how to get your enemy into a position where you can well basically toy around with them they also need to have lower energy they also need to be in front of you not behind you and basically you want to toy around with them and hit them with that aim 9m in the six basically whatever you want to do with this aircraft and the missiles just don't launch them at head-ons just side aspect shots from close range two clicks and below or the rear aspect shots probably at three kilometers and that's your maximum the only actual threat to this aircraft believe it or not is a yak 141 because it can match basically whatever you do yak 141 has the thrust vectoring and actually it does it way better than the harrier it doesn't lose energy as much as the harrier and the thrust vectoring on that yak 141 actually helps it to be a really 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 good dogfighter other than that, believe me when I say that this aircraft is like a mini Gripen. If you want to grind the Gripen and you want to learn how the Gripen actually flies and how it actually performs, this aircraft is going to help you out a ton when it comes to learning the Gripen and how, well, basically it functions. Because the playstyle that it offers is extremely, extremely, extremely similar to this. And to be fairly honest, at this point, I wouldn't even pick a Gripen over this plane just because of the BR difference. Anyway guys, in here we reach the end of this video. Please do hit us up with a like to help the algorithm out, a subscribe, and if you want, join the Discord. Well, it's a fancy notification bell, and that's about it. It's extremely quiet down there. But, with that said, I'll see you on the next one.